Okay, next up, let's learn how to make some links. So back here in the code, let's create, um, uh, how about this? Here, up here under our address, let's make a link to uh, an external website. Let's start with that one. So the way we do that, uh, the link that we want to appear, let's say, see my Wikipedia page or something like that. So what we need to do is separate the text that we want to appear as a link from the link itself. That's one of the things that's always confusing to students. This is the text that we want students to see and appear. Oh, and by the way, we better add a line break right here so that this appears below that. Um, we want a Wikipedia page to appear, uh, but we want the link to be uh, also Wikipedia page. We want it to take it to, let's go and pull up once again, that Homer Simpson Wikipedia page. All right, so I'm gonna copy that URL, head back over to code, and I'm right here around this text that I want to be the actual link. I'm gonna create an A tag. Now notice, first of all, that there is a closing A tag. That makes sense because uh, you notice how much of the text you want to be a link there. You, that's something that needs to be determined by the opening and closing tag. I'm going to also do this inline because I'm not going to have any other elements in, in here. But notice, like the image tag, we're clearly going to need some attributes. So it doesn't know where to link. You might think that this is where we need the source attribute, but for whatever reason, back in the early days, we decided to call this one href for, I think, hypertext reference, hyperlink reference, something like that. Anyway, um, in here goes the URL of the location of where we're going to send it. So. I think I lost in memory my URL. Let me copy that again. Controller Command C, Controller Command V. Okay, let's save that. Control S. Go back here to our code. Refresh. See my Wikipedia page. Now notice I've got the underline and it made it purple. It's purple because I visited this page before. It'd be blue if I'd never been there. Click on it, and now it takes me to that web page. So nice and cool. Let's add and customize a few more attributes. Um, again, this is where it's going to go, but what I want to do next is tell it, all right, now I want to keep people always on my site, which means uh, rather than make them go to the new site in this same page, I want to open this link in a new page so that it keeps my resume site open. So to do that, I go back here and I use another attribute. Oh, and you might be asking, does it matter what order the attributes appear in? Um, almost all of the time, no, not at all. But there are some exceptions to that rule. We'll get to those later. But for now, we're going to put it back here and we're going to use a target attribute. So target has some standard values that you have to put in here. Now notice with href, there is no standard in what goes in here because it can be a local file. Just like it can be a, a URL somewhere external, I can link this to another HTML page. We'll do that in a bit. Um, so there's no requirements for this. Target has a set number of values that can be in there. And they all start with this underscore. And there's parent, which says open this uh, page in the page that opened this page. No, that's not what we want. Self is a default, which means open it within the same page. That's not what we want. We want blank, underscore blank. That means open this current page in something new. Let's give that a shot, make sure it works. Refresh, click on this. Yep, it opened up a new tab. My other one's still open here. Cool, let's add one more attribute. All right, now we're starting to get beyond the page, so I'm gonna, no, never mind, I'm not going to. Other attribute I wanna add here is a lot like alt, but it's called something else. I'm trying to remember now. Oh, title, that's it. So title is a lot like the alt. Um, it's something that'll be read by screen readers um, to also tell, you know, uh, someone who's blind where this link is actually going to take them. So I'm going to say this is a wiki page on Homer Simpson. Okay. Dip, uh, another minor difference here. Let's refresh this. As I hover over the link now, I also get this little, there we go, popped up. Whatever I put in my title attribute, I get this little pop-up that says where it's going to go. Um, mildly useful well especially you know for phishing attacks and things like that it's well they're not going to use a title anyway so never mind about that um but the main thing is uh, helping disabled but also search engine optimization once again we want to stick keywords in title tags 
uh, that we want our page to be searched on. That's one more way to improve our search engine rankings. So now let's use uh, links in one more way. It's time for us to make some type of navigation. So far, our website's all of one page. So this is our resume page, but let's also make a home page. Um, where should we put our links? Let's see, I've got a picture, I guess, very top of the page. Let's put them there for now. We're going to get into structuring and moving things around horizontally on the page a little bit later. For now, let's just stick a home page link and a resume page link up at the top. Now this part, I always lose students a little bit on this. Um, so follow along closely here. Back on code. We want these links to be up here above image. All right, let's make two of them. A home and a resume. Okay, if I save this right now, and just by the way, take a look at this. Refresh. Oh yeah, I got a line break, but look, there's no link. There's no purple underline around it. That's because we haven't given it an href attribute yet. It doesn't know where to go, so technically it's not even a valid link, so it doesn't. It knows not to color them. Color them. Let's go ahead and add a couple of line breaks to put the image below that. And actually, I like to do this. Let me show you what that does. Add the space, and that this character is the one right above your return key, but you have to hold down Shift when you enter it. It makes a straight line. Let me save this and show you what it looks like here. There we go. Home and then resume, just to divide up all of our links. So home, uh, this is going to take us to a different page and resume is going to take us to this page. I'll start by putting in the href for resume because this page currently exists it's itself, resume.html. So why would I want to create a link to myself? Well, back here, I refresh it so you can see now because there's an href that works. It's just basically taking me back to the same page repeatedly. You can see my little refresh key here. Watch it twitch whenever I click it. That tells me that it is actually linking or moving me to itself, even though it, nothing appears to be changing down here. So I want consistency. When I make a home page and link to my home page, I want to see all the links look the same way. So it's okay for me to still uh, link to myself. Something else you might do, though, um, is use a pound sign right here. What does that do? Well, back here, if I refresh, notice it turned blue because I've never visited the pound sign, evidently. But uh, this, um, it still colors it like it's a link. But when I click on it, see how it added this hashtag or pound sign right here? Let me go back, delete that. Notice my refresh button won't, won't flicker. So I click resume, it looks like a link. It does essentially what it would have done anyway. It, instead of re-navigating me back to this page, it leaves me on this page. And it adds this pound sign here. The advantage of that is I don't waste resources for nothing. If someone wants to click resume and take them to the exact same page, rather than use my server resources, because eventually this will be hosted on a web server, and every time someone clicks a link, it takes power from that web server to send the page. So rather than waste power, I can just uh, use the hashtag to make it not go anywhere at all, but look like a link. But what I do need over here now is a link to my home page. All right, well, how should I do that? Let's start by making a home page. Okay, let's go back here, add a new file. I want you to call this one index.html. So web servers are, there's nothing magical about them. They're just computers. You can use your laptop as a web server. It's just a machine that's constantly connected to the internet that has specified a portion of the, of the files or the folder structure to be publicly available to anyone who, who wants them. And uh, notice uh, your, if you remember our security and privacy section of this course, if you took it earlier, you understand what an IP address is. You know that every computer connected to the internet has one. And you also know that you can go and find a computer by simply entering in an IP address for a website. So a web server, again, it's a computer constantly connected to the internet, but rather than enter in the IP address of that computer to get to its publicly available web pages, there's a name server somewhere, which is just another computer connected to the internet that has a database of IP addresses and URLs or domain names. So that when someone tries to find your machine, they can type in that name It'll go to a name server, and the name server will redirect them to your connected computer rather than them having to type in an IP address. On those web servers, they also have a little bit more logic. 
For example, it tells them what page to pull up in a website if they don't enter a page name. Let me show you what I mean. So here, uh, Wikipedia. All right. Notice when I just enter in wikipedia.org, I haven't typed in the name of an actual file that's pulling up. Well, here on our resume site, notice it's got the entire file listed right there. I had to put in the actual file name. Well, that's because this file's on my computer and not on a web server. On a web server, it has a bit of logic that says go to this URL, and in that URL, there's going to be a subfolder called wiki. In that subfolder wiki, there's a subfolder called main page, and in that main page, rather than make them have to type right here, um, home.html or something like that, the web server says, by default, automatically pull up index.html. And so there'll be a file that's designated as the default file that when someone enters in a URL without entering the file name itself, that'll show up. Let me give you another example. I'm pretty sure our university's website. There we go. I think they use, so here's byu.edu. If I hit slash index.html, does that work? Oh, <laughs> so they've got an index file in there. That's not it. I wonder if it's default. There we go. So your uh, the default file that gets pulled up automatically if no file is entered can be specified on the web server. But typically, the default is to have a file called default.html or index.html. And that's the file that gets automatically pulled up regardless of whether or not they actually enter it there in the URL navigation. See, I can just use the website and it'll pull up default.html anyway. Well, that's why back here, we've named our homepage index.html or default.html. But it won't do that uh, when someone goes to the website, it'll only pull it up by default if this folder was sitting on a web server somewhere that had that logic built into it. But in general, we build our, our websites often on our own machine first before we post them to a web server somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and name our homepage index.html anyway. In here, let's just put a few things. Uh, let's start with the basic HTML tags. Oh, come on. Okay, in the body now, uh, we're going to have our links again. Resume down here, let's put H1 home page or something stupid like that. I just want a file that exists and I want to copy our uh, our links. So here, now notice because I have two files open, they appear up here in tabs now. So on resume, I've got home and resume. And on index, I have home and resume. So now that index.html exists, let's go back in here to resume and we can put a link to it. So now I'm on resume.html. Go here to this link back to the home page, add a space and an href attribute. And this one, if you remember when we when we created the image, uh, I was able to refer to the image by its name as long as the image was a sibling element to the page that's referring to it. So resume is the one that's referring to Homer and their siblings, so I was able to use homer.png. Same thing applies here. I can refer to index.html simply by name because index and resume are sibling elements within the same parent folder. Didn't mean to do that. All right, so save that. Let's go ahead and go to our index page now and make these work. So I'm on index.html. What should I put here for href? Let's do the pound sign again, because that means make it look like a link, but don't actually go anywhere. And what do we put for this one? Hopefully you figured it out, resume.html. OK, so now we have a multi-page website. Let's go ahead and go back to resume right here. So we know we're on the resume page one because we can see all of our content, but also two because we see the name of it. Let's refresh. Now home is a blue underlined link because we've never pulled up index.html in a folder before it hasn't been visited. 
So let's click on it, and now it takes us to that home page that we just created, index.html. We also made a link to re resume so we can go back and forth and back and forth. Okay, you have created links in a multi-page site, both external links like this one and links to pages within the site like these ones. That's it for this video.